it goes. Did you see that barracuda bunch? If you didn't, that's okay, because it was this big. Yes, very small, and just went away. And today, friends, I don't know why I'm whispering, but we're going to get a chance to learn about extreme sizes. So things that are really teeny tiny and things that are so big they wouldn't even fit on the screen. Extreme animals today. My name is Jen, and joining me in the studio is Erin. She's going to be showing us some really cool extreme animal pictures. And then we also have Carrie, too. So if you have any extreme questions, go on ahead and send them on in. We would love to hear from you, Barracuda Bunch. You can always go on ahead and maybe you can get some help with a parent um, or an adult with your household. And you can go on ahead and text us in any kinds of questions or maybe things that you see that you want to share with us. And so you can always do that. Texting rates do apply, but you can go on ahead and text us right down here, 562-286-1838. And if you have a question that maybe comes up a little bit later, that's okay too. You can always go on ahead and email us down below at live at lbaop.org. All right, Barracuda Bunch. Today, like I said, we're going to be learning all about animals and the different sizes that they are. So with that, we're going to start with the itty bitty small and we're going to work our way to the extremely large. Are you ready? All right, friends. So first itty bitty teeny tiny eensy weensy little animal that we're going to be talking about is the dwarf cuttlefish. Yes, the I'm sorry, dwarf seahorse. I was keeping Erin on her toes there, the dwarf seahorse. Now this seahorse is only about two point or about two inches long. That's really small. That's like the size of my thumb right here. So it is only two inches long. This long, this itty bitty. See, here we have it, right? So here we have our cute little dwarf seahorse. Hmm. What do you notice about our little itty bitty teeny tiny eensy weensy seahorse that we have right here? Well, it is small. Do you see how its little tail is holding on? Now we are zooming in like a lot, a lot, because this right here is one piece of seagrass. Mm -hmm. Seagrass. If you think about grass on the lawn, it's a little bit bigger than that, but not very much. And it is holding on to one piece of seagrass. That's how tiny it is. Now, if we think about this very tiny animal, can you imagine how tiny its mouth is? It is so small. I can almost boop, boop it right on its nose or its mouth area. So what do you think it might eat being that small? Hmm. Well, probably things that are also super teeny tiny. Can you think of any kind of really super small food that our little tiny seahorse would want to eat? Hmm. If you're thinking, oh, maybe krill or plankton, things that are super small and hard to see, like this. Now we can see it with our eyes, but that's because we have the help with a, of a tool called a microscope. And we're able to zoom in and see all these little things. Now, this is the kind of stuff that you can actually find in ocean water. If you went ahead and you took a scoop of the ocean water and you used that microscope, you'd be able to see all of these little things. And this is all of what that little itty bitty seahorse likes to eat. Right? So that would be the favorite food of our little teeny tiny dwarf seahorse friends. Now, they only live for a short period of time though, so they can only live for about one to two years. But they have a lot of the same features that really help other seahorses stay, stay alive and happy and healthy. Can you think of ways that seahorses are able to stay happy and healthy? Hmm, well having food helps. Ow. There it goes, it's eating. Is it going to take another bite? There it goes. <laughs> so it's pretty fun to be able to see these small seahorses eat, right? Now, they of course use their little teeny tiny almost see-through fins that help them to eat too, which is pretty cool. And that fin is really what helps them to be able to move along. 
just like how we see here. It's taking such small bites. Our, its food is so small that we can't even see it. Pretty neat, huh? All right, friends. So, I think one thing that's really helpful for them being so teeny tiny is that it's really hard for things that want to eat them to see them, right? So things that may want to eat them, predators, might have a hard time seeing that seahorse, being like, oh, I thought I saw something move. I don't know what it was, but I just can't see it because it's so small. So it's a really neat way for these animals to stay alive. Mm. But you know what, friends? There's another animal that is also really teeny tiny and only a little bit bigger than a dwarf seahorse. And that would be, I hope maybe you might still have yours on, pajamas! And not just any kind of pajamas, this type of animal that's called a pajama squid. Yep. So maybe if you're in your pajamas, you can be like, hey, me and the squid both have pajamas on. But here's the funny thing, friends. It doesn't really look like a squid now, does it? Hmm. It's actually more related to a cuttlefish, which is like the squid's cousin. Can you think of another animal that's also related to a squid or a cuttlefish? Hmm. If you're thinking octopus, you got it. So this animal, this pajama squid, is related to an octopus. Can you think of anything on an octopus that helps it to stay alive? Hmm. Well, if you're thinking it has a mouth, ah, it definitely does. It has a beak like other squids do, and its mouth is actually underneath all of its arms that it has too. So much like an octopus, this one has lots of arms too. They're just tucked inside right now, so you can't see them, but they're there. Pretty cool, huh? If you think about another fun thing about an octopus is that they can change color, and the pajama squid can too, but normally they have those black and white stripes on them that really help them to be able to survive. So it's kind of cool that those pajama squid usually just like to have their pajamas on. Look how cute they are, they're so small. As a matter of fact, that, these are baby pajama squid, so they're even smaller, and that is a piece of sand. Can you believe it? A piece of sand, it is so small. Now, pajama squid, when they're full grown adults, are only about, well, two inches, maybe two and a half inches. So only a little bit bigger than my thumb. So these animals, very small, also only live for about one to two years, but there's nothing cuter than a small pajama squid baby, huh? It's so cute, it's so small. All right, friends, we'd love to hear from you. So if you happen to have any questions about our really teeny tiny small animals, you can always go on ahead and text us or have an adult text us right over here and we would love to hear from you friends. And so far, oh, this is a great picture. Thank you, Erin. Here's another baby pajama squid. So we have the size of a dime right here that's in a cup and we can see how small that baby pajama squid is. Ah, oh, it's so cute. I can't handle it. It's so small. Do you like a lot of small animals too? I'm a big fan. Oh, adorable. Now these animals will go on ahead and since these ones are so small, they just sit on top of the sand because nothing can really see them. But Erin, if we go back to that very first picture of the pajama squid where it was kind of buried underneath, that's the one thing that pajama squid love to do. Even though they can change colors, one of their favorite things to do is just to go on ahead and bury themselves into that sand and just have their cute little eyes stick up above the sand so that way they could look for any kind of tasty treat that may be coming by their way. Look at those eyes. Their eyes are even so small too. One, two, two eyes. Hmm. Since this is such a small animal, friends, guess what? Probably means they also eat small food. Mm -hmm. Just like that plankton that we saw earlier, these cute little us uh, pajama squid here, these cute little cuttlefish, also like to eat um, a lot of the plankton that's found too. Now, they'll also eat super duper, teeny tiny, 
teensy weensy little fish. Super small that they'll go on ahead and try to catch with their cute little cuttlefish arms. And they might even eat small mini crabs. Mm -hmm. Crabs that are so small that these cuttlefish will use those arms and they'll use little tentacles and they'll just, or use those arms and go Hop! and eat them. Hop, yum, 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 yum. Just like that. All right, friends. So we're going to go and we're actually going to move up in size now. And we're going to talk about, well, it's not even an animal. It's the algae that we find off of our coast here in Southern California. Ah, all around, it's sunny, it's bright. We're in the very parts to, uh, more like top part of our ocean right here. And here we have all of the seaweed. Mm -hmm. This seaweed that we have off of California is called giant kelp. Hmm. Why is it called giant kelp, you say? Because, friends, it can grow and it can grow, and it can grow, and it can grow, and it can grow so big, friends, that it can grow up to 100 feet long. Yes, it can. Isn't that amazing? And every day, it can grow two to three feet. Mm -hmm. Two feet maybe as tall as you. And so they can grow two to three feet a day. If you want to know what that size looks like, you can go on ahead, stick your arms into a V, and then put your arms down, and that is about three feet. And that's about how much it can grow in a day. Wow, that's so fast for an algae that we have right here. Now, if you're wondering how the algae actually stays on floating, right? Because all of it is floating here in the water. The cool thing is, is they have little balloons on them. Mm -hmm. Yep, here I have a make-believe version of seaweed right here, a fake piece, and every, this is what it would look like, and off for every little kind of like leaf our seaweed has, there is a little bubble right here, and that bubble is filled with air, and that's what helps keep this big piece of seaweed floating around in the water. Now, of course, it doesn't eat plankton like all of our small animal friends, but it definitely uses the sun to get energy. It uses all the vitamins and the water in there, and they're able to suck all that up, and they're able to grow and grow and grow. Now, friends, a lot of the oxygen, all the air that we breathe ah, actually comes from seaweed in the ocean. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, right? So we have a lot of the seaweed, and it is called giant kelp. So big that it can grow up to 100 feet, and sometimes even more, because here we can see it grow right on over the very top. So sometimes they'll grow, 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 and then boop, just kind of float on the very top of the ocean here. All right, friends. Now there is another animal that has giant in its name. Mm -hmm. Now it may not grow up to 100 feet because that would be really big, but there is an animal that lives in this habitat, in this home of the kelp forest. And that would be the giant sea bass. Mm -hmm. Giant sea bass lives here. Actually, we have a few in our blue cavern um, habitat here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Now, this is one of our live webcams. So it's basically a camera that's put inside of this, uh, this blue cavern. And you're able to watch these fish all the time. You can watch them at... 10 o'clock in the morning, you can watch them at maybe 8 o'clock before you go to bed and every time in between. So these animals are always moving around and are doing something fun. And oh, we have three giant sea bass. They're just being really shy. But you know who wants all the attention? Our eel friend that's coming by right now. Like, check me out. Oh, but now it got shy too. Oh, maybe it's going to come closer. Oh, Oh, friends, here we go, our giant sea bass right here. Another one right here. 
another one right here. Pretty neat, huh, friends? What are some things that you notice about our giant sea bass, friends? Hmm. Well, one thing that I see is that it has a lot of polka dots. Mm -hmm. I see polka dots all over its entire body. What else do you notice about this fish? Well, I think it looks like it has kind of a little bit of a smiley mouth or maybe a little bit of a frowny mouth. But it's definitely a big mouth. And it almost looks like it kind of has a big eye and big fins and a really big tail fin right here because it is a really big fish. Now, huh, being small before was really helpful because it was really hard for other animals to see it. But why do you think being big might also be helpful? Whoa, ah, so big. Oh my, that was scary. Oh, so do you think being big might be a way that those sea bass can protect themselves? You got it, nice job, friends. So being big can be so big that maybe no other animal will want to eat you because you are huge, you are large, and they are much smaller. So being big, it's a really helpful size to be. As a matter of fact, these sea bass, which have gone shy again, <laughs> they, uh, they can actually grow up to eight feet. Mm -hmm. So they can grow up to eight feet tall. That's pretty tall. That's almost up to, well, maybe about some ceilings, but almost pretty close to that. So they are eight feet in size. Uh, maybe if you put three of you, if three of you are doing V's and you stick them and you're all side to side with each other, that is almost the size of a giant sea bass. A little bit bigger, but that's about the size. Now, these giant sea bass can also get to um, about, oh, I think it's like four, no, 560 feet, it's 50, 50 pounds or so, 560 pounds. Oh, it's so amazing, my mind's mixing up all the numbers, right? 560 pounds! That's a lot of weight, that's really heavy. And they can live to anywhere between 60 to 70 years. So almost as old as a human. 60 to 70 years. Could you imagine? Oh, there goes the eel again. <laughs> it's even excited. They're like, wow, I can't even believe it. A sea bass can live up to 60 to 70 years. Amazing. <laughs> now our eel friend is not as big or can be about almost as long as a giant sea bass, I believe, but it's not nearly as as round and as big as a giant sea bass could be. But the eel friend is still pretty fun to watch too. All right, friends. So we've had a chance now to go from the itty teeny bitty uh, dwarf seahorse and the pajama squid. We've had a chance to talk about some of the seaweed and how tall it grows. And we've had a chance to look at our giant sea bass. Ooh, but one thing we forgot to talk about is their food, right? We talked about how the seahorse and the pajama squid have really teeny tiny small mouths, so they eat teeny tiny things like plankton or maybe the tiniest, smallest crab, right? But if we think about our seaweed, our algae here, our giant kelp, it doesn't eat food, right? It uses sun and vitamins and the water to be able to grow really big and really strong. Now, our giant sea bass has a really big mouth and it's a really big animal. Can you guess to what our giant sea bass might eat? Hmm. Oh, I thought I heard it. Yes, you're right. Fish, that is one of its favorite foods. And now this animal is actually very slow weighing f up to 562 pounds, it cannot move very quickly. And so, you know what it does instead? It keeps its mouth closed, and then it blends in with the water and the seaweed behind, and it just kind of stays there. 
until a fish swims by. And then when that fish swims by, it opens up its mouth. <gasps> and its mouth is so big that it's almost like a vacuum. And that fish gets sucked in. And that's how our sea bass eats. Can you believe it? It just opens up its mouth and it makes its own little vacuum. <gasps> and it eats that fish. I think that's pretty cool. Now, friends, we've been talking a lot about our ocean, right? And the, wa the middle part of our ocean where we see nothing but a lot of water that's all around us. But let's go on ahead and let's move from Southern California into some deep, dark waters where our next animal lives. Are you ready? That's great. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this animal right back here, the spider crab. Do you want to make pinchy spiders with me? Pinchy spider crab, little pinchers? Very nice, right? So here we are. We are a large spider crab like this one that we have right here. Now it is huge. It's like an extreme crab. This crab, just the legs itself, the legs right here can be up to 12 feet. Yes, 12 feet for a crab leg. Oh my goodness, that is so big. So our crab legs can be about 12 feet and the body part of the crab is a little over one foot. So if you think about the size of a ruler, it's about this long, the body is about the size of a ruler. Wow. And then if you put 12 little rulers together, that's how long one leg is. So could you imagine having really big legs? Maybe you can make large spider legs with me. All right, you can spread your feet really wide apart. You can maybe go a little further down, put your little pinchies up, and there you go. You too are a really big spider crab. Now, spider crabs, do you think they move around a lot? Do you think they're like this? Or do you think they maybe move like this? Hmm. What do you think, friends? Do you think they move like this? Or much slower? Hmm. If you're thinking slow, you're right. These animals move very slow. Those 12 feet long legs really aren't made for speed. They are made to be very slow and to move around to be able to find their food. Now, these crabs are not as heavy as the giant sea bass. Remember that giant sea bass weighed about 500, over 500 pounds. The spider crab only weighs up to, well, 40 pounds or something like that. So it's not really huge, but it's big enough and it's wide enough. Well, maybe to protect itself? Hmm. Now a spider crab definitely can be big, maybe to scare off other things. But can you think of something else that a spider crab might have to protect itself with? Ah, oh, this is a great video. Thank you, Erin. Here we can see our spider crab. And it's doing a lot of different things right now. We can see that maybe it uses its pinchers for protection, right? That's one way that it can stay alive. But they also have, if you look, a very hard body. They have a shell that's all around the outside of them. And that is a way that they could protect themselves too. So they're really big. That helps keep them being scary from other animals. They have pinchers on them. And they have that really hard shell that they use to protect themselves. Wow, so that's like three different ways that they can stay happy and healthy. Hmm. So friends, with this animal, it's a slow moving animal. It has armor on the outside. It has some pinchers and it is really huge. Hmm. Any guesses to what our spider crab friend might eat? Hmm. Now, if we think about it, the mouth is actually right here. Let's see if Aaron can play that video one more time and we can see those mouth parts move again. 
They're right there. Hmm. They kind of move around back and forth. Any thoughts, any guesses to what you think our spider crab friend might eat? Hmm. Maybe plankton. Maybe it goes on ahead and it uses that mouth to eat some of that plankton that's in the water. So that might be one thing, but it also has some pinchy friends too. So any other guesses to what it might eat? Hmm. Well, having those pinchers, they almost look like they're a fork and knife all in one, right? They seem very sharp. So maybe they can use it to hold a bigger piece of food. Maybe a squid, maybe a fish even, right? Or maybe anything that it can find on that ocean sea floor. Now these animals live in the very deep ocean, deeper than any kind of sun that would be found in the ocean. So they live in the deep dark parts of our ocean here. So they have to not be very picky about what they eat. All right, friends, we'd love to hear any kinds of questions that you might have. So feel free, Barracuda Bunchers, to go on ahead and text us on in right here. Now, we have one last animal. It is the largest animal in the ocean, in the world. Can you guess to what it might be? It's the biggest. I thought I heard it. One more time. Blue whale? Yes, you got it, friends, a blue whale. Now, these blue whales off of our California coast can get up to 80 feet long. That's even larger than a school bus. Mm -hmm. So it can go up to 80 feet and down along like South America and the Southern Hemisphere down there, they can actually get to over 100 feet long. Now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we actually have a model of a blue whale. So you can walk underneath it and see actually how big it is. And it's pretty incredible. Now, when you're on a boat, you can go on ahead and look out for these whales. You can use binoculars to see if you can find blue whales. But if you're lucky enough and it's really close, maybe you could see a little part of this blue whale right here, right? These animals are so big that you usually don't get to see the entire animal. You only get to see a part of the animal right here. So what we have, friends, is our blue whale. And this part is actually a really teeny tiny little fin on our really big animal here. Huh. Well, if we think about this big animal, it's the biggest animal in our ocean. What do you think this animal might eat? Hmm, it's really big. Do you think it eats really big things? Hmm, might not eat something big like a tuna. That'd be really big. I wonder, we didn't get a chance to really see its mouth. Any guesses to where the mouth of a blue whale might be? Hmm, well, probably be in the front of the animal, right? Now, I actually have some of the inside part of a blue whale's mouth. Now, blue whales don't have teeth, ah, like we do. Instead, they have something called baleen. And I'm gonna show you a piece of that baleen all right, friends, this is not of a blue whale. This is of a humpback whale. But here we have some baleen. And you can see just from a blue whale or just from a humpback whale, it is half, almost half the size of me. So that's pretty big. And it has two parts to it. You can see it from here. And this is what you would see when you're looking at the mouth of a blue whale is that you would see all of these little parts right here. But on the other side, on the inside of its mouth, this is what it looks like. It looks like little hairs. 
Now, what's really neat is that this baleen is made out of the same thing as your fingernails. So if you want to know what this baleen feels like, just touch your fingernail and you now know what baleen feels like. And this is a part that we share on the whales, right? So if a whale has this stuff on the inside of its mouth, and this is what it looks like on the outside parts, any guesses to what it might eat? Hmm. Well, if you're thinking, and you may have heard it, krill, right? That is one of their foods that they love to eat. It's something called krill. And it's really small shrimp-like animals. And here, oh, awesome. So here we have a video of one of our blue whales. Oh, and it's coming up to breathe. Oh, it's so mighty, the blue whale. And I'm sure it's eating some krill that it's found in the ocean and underneath. Wow, these are majestic animals. Look at it, taking another breath. Incredible. And this, friends, we can get a chance to see, oh, it's a little tricky, all of these are all the teeny tiny little shrimp that they like to eat. So they're only as big as my thumb, which means that's only about the size of a dwarf seahorse. That's about the size of their food. It is very small. So how neat is it that the biggest animal in the world eats some of the smallest food? All right, friends, Barracuda Bunch, we are out of time, but I want to thank you for joining us and getting a chance to look at some extreme animals. We had a chance to look at animals that are only the size of my thumb, two animals that are bigger than this entire screen and bigger than a school bus. Now, feel free to go to the Kids Club page on our website to be able to find the classes that you're watching and keep exploring with our at-home activities. The activity that we have with extreme animals is basically seeing, are you bigger than an emperor penguin? Mm -hmm. So you can find out by going to our at home activities page for our summer kids club. And don't forget, you can always go on ahead and share all of your discoveries with us at hashtag AOP kids club online. All right. Thanks friends. Have a great rest of your day and uh, Barracuda Bunchers. We'll see you next Monday. Bye friends.